Hey guys, now that you've got all the models and maps, I'm going to show you how I animate using these models in Blender. I'm not great at explaining things, but I'll demonstrate how I do it. When you download the file, you'll see this. I completely forgot to rename the folders, so pause this video right now and rename them to avoid confusion. The G5 Ponies folder contains the IK rigs and the main merge folder contains the FK rigs. If you're not familiar with uh, IK FK rigs are, they're like bones that can save your ass in animation. IK or inverse kinematics rigs allow you to move parts of the model by grabbing a specific point, like the hand, and pulling it to where you want it to go. FK or forward kinematics rigs allow you to control the model's movement by manipulating specific joints like the shoulder to achieve the desired motion. Let's start with the IQ rigs first, and for today, we'll use Sunny. As you can see, this is Sunny. Hi, Sunny. Right now, we're in pose mode, which is why the bones look colorful. What you see here is the Ecosphere, Icosphere. which is the head control. You can move her head and adjust her eye posing by clicking on the Ecosphere. Icosphere. In the properties, you'll find various options for the eye posing, allowing you to change the eye positions and adjust the size of her eyes to convey different emotions like making her look mad or crazy. Now let's switch to the object mode and click on the model. You'll see the shape keys, which offer plenty of options to change her facial expressions, including her lips, eyelids, eyebrows, and jaw. My friend and I attempted to add a face rig to this model, but it didn't work out and everything fell apart. So we stuck with the shape keys and animated her facial expressions there. I'm not great at rigging, so it's a bit rough, especially if you plan to lip sync using shape keys. But I can show you later how we do it. <clears throat> now let's change to the timeline and turn on auto keying. We can start animating her body, but first we need an audio clip of what she's going to say so we can imagine how she would move. For this tutorial, I decided to record myself and use it as a reference. Hey, you look stupid. To add audio in Blender, right click on the timeline and select vertical split. Then click on the screen and it will split. Next, switch the screen to the video sequencer and press add, then sound. Locate the audio clip you recorded and import it into Blender. Now that it's here, you can close this by right-clicking on the middle screen and selecting Join Areas to remove the second screen. Now let's get started. First, we'll animate her body. When a pony speaks, their body moves, conveying emotions through their movements and helping us understand the meaning behind their words. I'll use the rotation tool to move her body like this. The animation might look a bit awkward first, but remember, this is just a tutorial. Now let's start. I'll imagine how she would say this and begin with nodding and subtle up and down movements as she talks. It's important not to overdo it, just keep the movements subtle. There we go! It's starting to look good! Now let's move on to animating her head. As I mentioned earlier, I'll make her look like she's nodding while ensuring her head movements match her speech. Subtle movements of her head are key. And there we have it! All done! Look at that! Isn't it cute? Okay, next up, I'm going to animate her hooves. In case you're curious about those pole vectors, they basically balance and rotate her arms while maintaining the position from the hoof. Same goes for the circles on her elbows, they rotate. Right now, I'm going to make her hoof point at some pony after saying you look stupid. It makes it look really alive and kind of funny just pointing at someone and calling him stupid. Hey, you look stupid. <laughs> nice. Now it's time to make her head tilt. The circle on her head controls the Y rotation for head tilting, and I'm going to animate it. Next up is her hair. 
Always remember to animate hair if a pony is moving. It makes the animation look good. Sometimes I animate using this cone, but it goes through her body and bends oddly. So basically I rotate some of the bones on the hair strand so it doesn't bend oddly and matches the position I imagine. Now let's animate it. All done! Now it's time for the ears. It's my favorite part to animate because I have to match what kind of expression she's going to have using her ears. Since her head is tilted, we're going to make her ears flop to the side, matching her expression. I also added some ear flick because he looks nice when they do that, and it's adorable. Now it's time for some shape key action. This time I'm going to animate her eyelids and maybe do some blinking action and subtle movements. If you want to keyframe it, you can press this dot right here, and it will automatically put it in the timeline. It's going to take a while, but as long as you keep replaying your animation, it will motivate you to keep going and see the final results. I'm also going to add some eyebrow action to add more emotion to Sunny, like she's probably curious. I always use the brow scrunch because it looks nice when she's making that facial expressions. I also have to move the eyebrows up and down when she's trying to blink. We blink and sometimes our eyebrows follow that. Just make it subtle. Now she looks surprised and kind of disappointed at you. Perfect. Now we start animating her eyes. I'm going to head over to the eye posing properties and animate it. You can right click this and insert a keyframe. I have to make her eyes focus on someone she's pointing at, so she can be staring right in front of her. Done! Now it's time for the difficult part. Lip syncing. I have to use the jaw and pucker for some lip movement when she pronounces the words. So this will take some time, but don't worry, this won't kill you. At least. Hey! You look stupid. Now it's finished! The animation is complete. What I'm going to do now is add some lighting, but first we need some environment. Because when I turn on the rendered viewport, it's almost pitch black. So I need a bit of light and maybe reflections in their eyes. If you don't know where to find the environments, follow these steps. First you have to go to the disk C, then head to the program files and make sure to find the Blender Foundation folder. 
after you click the folder, go to the version you're using right now. Mine Blender is version 4.0, so I'll pick that. After you click the folder, go to Data Files, Studio Lights, and World. There you have it! You can use whatever environment you want. I always choose the forest because it looks nice. I added some sunlight behind Sunny so it would look natural on a very hot day like in my place with a heat index of 16 degrees celsius right now. Pretty neat. And now we render! I'm going to switch to the scene and change the render engine to cycles but you can render in EV if your computer can't handle too much rendering space. I have to turn on denoising to remove all the noise for rendering and I set the max samples to 10 just so it could render fast. You can set it to 126 or whatever can handle your computer. My file format for this is PNG sequence because I prefer to render it that way with a transparent background. But you can render any kinds of file formats like MP4 for video. Remember to click render and then click render animation. Time to see the results. Hey, you look stupid. I guess that wasn't too bad. It turned out pretty nice. Now that you've seen how I animate 3D ponies, feel free to follow my lead or adjust things to your liking. Now onto addressing some questions about missing textures and messy maps. The truth is, my friend handled all the extracting and unfortunately some textures didn't come through, which is a bit disappointing as for the other maps while they do have textures, they're all over the place and lack location data. I apologize if this is disappointing, but if we manage to resolve these issues, I'll be sure to share an update. Keep an eye on my Twitter for any announcements. Oh, I almost forgot. In case you want to add ponies to a specific place or maps, try following these steps. First off, pick one of the maps you want to use. I'll use Beach Cove as an example. Now that it's open, click File and then click Append. Now search for the folder containing the models you want to use like the sunny model or the easy model. I'll pick easy. Once you've selected the model, it will appear like this. Now press collection and click on the name of the model, easy. And there you go! She's now here in the beach cove. You can adjust her position and maybe scale her a bit. You can also do the same thing for maps. If you also want to put your animation in this file, you can save the Blender file where you animated the model, then use that Blender file and append it to this map. Now you have finally placed your model's animation in this map. As for the FK ponies, you'll find various models, including background ponies from the shell. Let me demonstrate how to use this rig, this time using Jazz Hooves. So here's Jazz. Hey Jazz. The rig might look really intimidating when you first open the model, but don't worry, I can show you how to use it. First, I need to put this header on the top, don't mind me, I just like it this way. Okay, let's go into the pose mode and head to the negative Y viewpoint so we can see the bones. Then switch to the edit mode and press A to select all bones. You may notice all the bones are too distracting to see. So what I'm going to do is to go to the active tool and turn on the x-axis mirror. Make sure to add it to quick favorites. You can press Q to check quick favorites. Once that's done, head to the transformation orientation and click local. Then go to pivot point and change it to individual origins. Since we did that, scale it down and now the bones are no longer distracting. Don't worry, the bounce won't change anything to the model, it's purely cosmetic. Next, head to the pose mode and enable auto I key and X axis mirror. Remember to add them to your quick favorites. Now the bones are mirrored. You can turn this off by disabling the X axis mirror if you need to make your own face expressions. Okay, next up, we need to fix her jaw. Follow these steps and select these bones. You can see this is her jaw, but we can't open her mouth with it. So what we need to do is switch to edit mode. With all the selected bones visible, parent them and select make and keep offset. That's going to make the jaw and mouth both open if you move this single bone. 
But there's a problem. Her teeth do not move with her jaw. Oh no. Don't worry, we need to find the bone of the teeth and tongue. Then repeat the process. Select the bones and also the jaw bone that we parented and head to the edit mode, parent and select, make and keep upset. Now she can scream for eternity. Wow, good luck using these models. And oh, here's one last tutorial for this FK model. Once you open the FK folder, you might notice this file right here, but you'll find out what it's about later. You need to open edit, go to preferences, click install, find that file and click it. Once you've done that, try searching for it in the bar, enable it, and then save preferences. Open an FK model, then head to File, click Import, and you'll see this new add-on, Skeleton Animation. Click this Sunny Skeleton PSA in the Sunny Model folder. It'll load for a minute, don't worry. Once the loading is done, you will get all the animations from the main merge, complete with walking cycles and all other kinds of animations. Let's see what she looks like with the walking animation. Look at her, wandering around in a void. <laughs> That's it for the tutorial video. I don't know if it's really a tutorial. It's kind of a mix of how I animate and a tutorial, but I really hope this helps you. If you make a G5 animation using this folder I gave you, you can share it with me in my DMs and I would totally support it in your work. Thanks for watching, and I hope Macaroni gives you macaronis. Bye bye, my fellow macarons.